Okay folks, this is Dragon, um, just moving along with the uh, video series on off-grid homesteading. The next topic is water. Now water is very important, as we all know. It's required for sanitation, human consumption, gardens, livestock, Fruit trees, okay, now in this area over the last couple of years, uh, probably going back three years, we've had pretty good rainfall. Now this homestead uh, has these rainwater tanks two five thousand gallon water tanks uh, they're metal ones um, galvanized and you see the pipe there it's all caught off the uh, the roof catchment area this house has a huge catchment area on its roof and it certainly has the ability uh, to install more tanks we we'll have a close look, uh, see if I can zoom in down here. Okay, down on the cement slab and there you can see the outlet, the hose, water hose outlets, there and there. Now as we know, um, water doesn't flow uphill. So, in order to get that water up into uh, the re water reticulation in the house they've got to use uh, electric pumps and, and in this place this is what they have electric pumps okay now we're starting to see look at integrations of systems um, covered across the various topics these electric pumps work off the solar off the off-grid solar power system okay this is where you start, you've got to become aware of the resources you've got and the limitations and how to use them very wisely, uh, very economically. Water in itself around here can be, uh, during a drought, uh, was a big problem. I mean, in fact, many homesteads around here, when we weren't getting enough rain to fill these tanks, had to actually buy water in by the tank loads. Quite an expensive exercise. And if we look around, On the poultry yard, another small water tank there, that's to uh, provide water for the poultry. And on the shed round the back, they've got another small tank. So it comes down to being very water wise. Knowing what resources you've got. and looking at other available sources of water which I'll cover in a moment. So let's just see, yep, I'll have to go around the other side. There's an electric pump under the house anyway. Also, as seen in a previous video, they've got a solar hot water system on the roof. This uh, reduces the power requirements to heat water for reticulation in the house. But again, uh, water has to be pumped up through that, through the collectors, so that you can have hot water in the house. Water is also required for sanitation. Now, some places have septic tanks with uh, flush toilets on them, the cisterns in them. Um, John and Sandy installed uh, another type of system, which is uh, virtually... A water saver in other words it's um, it doesn't use any water at all and I'll cover that that point later but they thought it out they planned it out they prepped in their planning to think about water so also on this property I've got three dams or ponds as they're sometimes called 
and um, I'll just go over to one, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, just in front of us here, we've got <coughs> one of the electric pumps that provides water reticulation into the house. As I said before, uh, this runs off the off-grid solar system. And as I mentioned before, you're starting to see how this sort of comes together, uh, the integration of systems used for off-grid living and um, certainly some topics we, um, we discussed on the forum. So there, that's it there. Okay, this is one of the uh, dams or ponds. Uh, this one was, was man-made, they had to get dozers in to build it. Um, and when you site these, uh, these dams or ponds, uh, you've got to look at a collection area. So it's got quite a good uh, collection area or runoff area uh, to fill this dam. Uh, John was saying the other day that uh, when they were actually building this dam they hit water, uh, the dozers, so um, there's uh, a bit of a, sp a spring water feed into it too. Now this water here um, is jerried up some hoses uh, which he can use for irrigation for vegetables, fruit trees and so on. Again they have to be hooked up to the electric pump system on the house or use a uh, mobile type pump system to uh, provide water reticulation to wherever he wants it. This is quite a deep dam and there's another one off to my left uh, further down the hill which I'll go down to later and another one off to my right further up the hill uh, we'll go and have a look at that one too. These dams um, or ponds uh, can also provide a food source uh, in that uh, we've got yabbies, uh, crochies, red claw, crawdads, whatever you want to call them. They live in these dams and in fact this dam has got some in them. Uh, same with the other th the two dams and uh, he's given, John's given me permission to uh, drop a pot in and uh, see what comes out. But also a lot of uh, homesteads uh, stock these dams with uh, fish. In this area uh, yellow tail and I think the other ones are um, perch or silver perch. So that uh, provides a, a food source, another food source. Bearing in mind that you have to be very careful that you don't deplete stocks in these dams, um, but it is an additional food source when you're looking at uh, living off grid. Okay, moving on. Okay, this is the dam I showed you before. It's quite deep, and as you can see, I hope you can see in the camera, the water looks um, a bit off colour. Um, a lot of uh, tree debris in here, so it's probably been uh, uh, a lot of tannins soaked out of the uh, gum trees and so on, that uh, debris that have fallen in here. Uh, it's a very deep uh, pond or dam. Um, Yes, they do use it for recreational use, of swimming and so on. But water like this, yes, it's fine for irrigation. But if you need to drink it, well, needless to say, it's got to be filtered and it's got to be sterilised. It's as simple as that. The runoff from the land around here, you've got decaying matter, um, animal faeces and so on. So you've got all sorts of bacteria and so on living in this water. So it's not really suitable and I wouldn't advise drinking this water straight out of the pond. It needs to be filtered and it needs to be sterilised. That's the dam wall there. Okay, that's this modern homestead. Now, some homesteads, they'll have wells or bores as we call them here in Australia. Um, this this particular homestead doesn't. So what they're relying on is uh, water catchment in the dams and also the rainwater tanks. Again, mindful of uh, consumption, water levels, times of year, uh, drought, heavy rains, and as I mentioned in the introduction, it's a change of lifestyle. 
So you've really, really got to think about what you're using out here, the resources you've got, and just how limited they can be. And for many people, it's a lifestyle that, that, that um, they have a lot of problems with, uh, with the razzle dazzle. They see in the net and in booklets and so on about living off grid. It's a mindset, got to do the research. It's part of uh, prepping for it if you're looking at doing this sort of thing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research and prepping that needs to go into it. Uh, before you take, take out the first shovel of soil. Alright folks, catch you later.